Hey guys, welcome back to Vince Bell Customs. So today we're going to continue on with part three in a work in progress series of taking a Sideshow Collectibles Black Canary Premium Ford statue and turning it into a Velma from Scooby-Doo. I'm really enjoying taking these, you know, superhero statues from Sideshow or other companies and taking anime characters, manga characters and stuff like that and convert them into there as a one of a kind just to see how they look and it's been a pretty fun and I'm enjoying it a lot to see these type of characters that would probably never get mass produced like this but just to see a one of a kind uh, turned into them. So in the last two videos we did is we did a lot of chopping, prep work, sanding, uh, we did a lot of planning, we thickened up the legs, uh, we got the socks and shoes on, we repositioned this arm here, we did this hand as a 3D print and we molded and cast it and added it on. Uh, we got this set up, we got the chest set up, the glasses and then everything up there. So as of right now we're kind of working from the bottom to top and that's kind of like how this one's evolving because it's better to do the socks and shoes, the legs, then we're going to add the skirt in this video. And then, depending on how this video goes, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start trying to plan out the collar up here. Because I think what's going to happen is I'm debating on having the collar kind of bend down a little bit. We'll get to that later in the video. Uh, so it's not going to be completely tight over here, but we'll see how that goes. But for right now, we're going to focus on the uh, skirt because that's something that uh, needs to be a little, a little tricky, but we'll see how it works. Off camera, what I did between the last video and now, though, is I cleaned up these arms a bit. So what I did is uh, I kind of sanded down this arm here a bit. And then what I did is I put the peg in there with some uh, magic sculpt or, I mean, some aves. And then I pressed it down to give it a nice flat thing. And then I sanded it and primed it. So now we have a nice smoother transition between each piece. The same thing over here as well. So you can see when you pop this out now, it's a little bit cleaner. And this way, once I add the uh, cuffs on her wrist over here, and these arms will go in a little bit better. But I have to kind of clean up this wrist here a little bit. I haven't done that yet. And I did kind of work out the hand in here a bit uh, because, uh, you know, the casting, everything was a little bit messy. So I got to clean that up. But we're good there. Uh, so what I'm going to do right now is just give you guys an idea of what I'm going to do with the skirt. So I'm going to pop off all these pieces that are very fragile. Uh, I don't want to snap any of this stuff like the glasses and this finger and stuff. We'll put those aside. Uh, this arm though I need to keep uh, when I'm ready to start doing the skirt. But I'm going to give you guys an idea with Silly Putty what I'm thinking of the skirt. And then that will give me a better idea and you guys an idea of like what I'm thinking about doing. So my idea is pretty much... We're going to roll out some magic scope when I'm ready to do it. We're going to wrap it around her. And then what's going to happen is I have to do that in the morning one day. And this way as the day goes on and the magic scope starts to cure and it starts to get harder, I can kind of play with it and move it around and get it to where I need it to go. And then once that's cured up after a day, I could go back with Aves and I could kind of fudge like a pleated skirt look. But we'll kind of explain that later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop off this stuff now. I'm going to just grab some uh, Silly Putty. Uh, which is really good to give me an idea on how I want to do stuff. And we can slap some Silly Putty on here and it'll give you a little bit of a better idea of what's going on. But this arm and these glasses, I'm going to pull this off so I don't snap that stuff. Alright, so uh, at this point what I like to do is roll out um, Silly Putty and just give myself an idea of what's going on. So this is just some really of the older Silly Putty I have. Uh, just grab a rolling pin, roll it out and then slice it with an X-Acto blade. Um, so the idea is this part is going to be flowing up, so to make my life easier, I'm going to wrap the silly putty like this around there. So you figure the skirt comes up to about maybe here, a little bit higher. So we'll just kind of wrap this around like here, like that. So that's probably where the skirt's going to be like. That also gives me an idea of how much magic sculpt I'm going to have to kind of sculpt up, you know. And then what's going to happen is we'll put the magic sculpt around like that. And then that's kind of like sort of just a representation of where it's going to be. Alright, so that's kind of like where the skirt is. Now, of course, you could do it a couple ways. If you want to do a tight mini skirt, you can, but that's not Velma. So what I'm thinking of doing is the idea would be her skirt sort of maybe is coming up in the wind. So we can kind of see some of the booty, you know, maybe something like this. You know, maybe, maybe even I could go somewhere like that, you know. Um, I could play with this a little bit more here. Um, maybe this comes down a little bit like underneath there. And we have sort of a, sort of something like that. I don't know. Kind of toying with the idea. Now, don't get me wrong, this is kind of going out way too far than what I want. You know, I'm going to have to cut it down a little bit more. Because I don't want it to be a very long skirt. Um, I'm kind of looking at the screen right now on some of the... You know, well, 
some artwork, some cosplay, stuff I had in my first video. Gives me a little idea. I do like the idea of the shorter skirts, you know. So this probably might end up a little bit shorter. So maybe, you know, we'll lift this up a little bit more. Yeah, maybe something like that, you know. Like maybe this is kind of curving up like this a bit, you know. That's kind of not bad. Sort of, you know. Yeah, something like, you know, almost something like this. It's kind of a little bit tighter over on this area and flows up over there. So this will probably be cut down a little bit more. And what's always good too is to have this arm in here just in case. Gives me a little bit of an idea of how much room I got. So I have to make sure I have enough room to get this in there when I do the other part too. So that's kind of sort of an idea, you know. Um, like I said, it's going to... You know, we can, so her skirt's kind of wavy in a sense, you know, so it's maybe got a little bit of the booty shot underneath here. Um, this kind of comes around like this. So it'll definitely, you know, when I work on with the uh, magic scope, that's something I have to sit there and really kind of play with for like a few hours. So it's something like one day when I know I'm going to do this skirt, but not definitely today, I'm just kind of just kind of thinking about it. Um... It's all about uh, mi mixing up the Magiscope, adding it onto her, and then as the couple hours go by, you keep playing with it till the Magiscope starts to get a little bit tougher, and I could get in there and start really messing with it and go. So definitely, I'm going to have to sit there too and mark, you know, how high this goes, uh, because we really don't want to go too high. But like I said, I really want to be able to see the booty, so the back of this is going to be like that, you know. So kind of get down a little bit closer. So you kind of see like what I'm going for, you know, something like that. You know, I want the front to look good too. So, uh, but the, also the thing I have to think about is we're not mass engineering this, where these legs are going to be casted up separately and then glued in. So I have to make sure whatever I do, I'm able to paint underneath. So my idea too is pretty much do the skirt. And then afterwards, maybe uh, like add a like a stripe of extra A's on top of it to create like a pleated look to it, um, to kind of have a little bit more fun. But I'm looking at a couple of these skirts online, and some of them are really pleated, some of them are not pleated at all, uh, some of them are just kind of messy. Um, so we're gonna have to kind of see how that works. But right now, I think this skirt is too long. I think uh, what we really need to do is I think it has to come up more here. I think it's going to have to come up a little bit higher, like so, you know, yeah, definitely somewhere about like up there like that, you know, if we do sort of like this kind of look with the skirt, yeah, this kind of pleated look, you know, something, maybe this is going to be up a little bit higher too. Yeah, so, you know, so... Don't look at this too much as more as just kind of looking underneath of it. So that's kind of what I'm going for, in a sense. I think that should work out pretty well. So we're going to have to probably mix up about that much eaves. So that's probably like, what, an inch and a half or so? Oh, almost two inches. Eh, probably like an, an inch and three quarters. Uh, and then kind of wrap it around. So like I said, I mixed up this uh, too much. Um... I could slice this off right now too. So this is kind of what I usually do with a lot of my uh, customs. If I got something like this, sort of gives me a little bit of an idea of where I'm going with things. Okay, so. Alright, get a little bit more of an understanding of how it's going to look. Like I said, this is going to have to come up a little bit more. Yeah, it's starting to shape up, it's starting to get a little bit of an understanding, you know, kind of. Yeah, it's it's definitely going to, this is way too long, so the A's will be work better because Silly Putty just kind of, you know, just warps on you. And it's kind of a pain to kind of work Silly Putty. 
but it gives you a better idea. Now, the other thing too is for the neck, like I said in this video, maybe we'll, we'll be able to do it, is I think I'm gonna have to bring down the neck. Um, let's see, if she's kind of leaning this way, so maybe we'll bring the neck and the key down a little bit more like here, you know? So this way, when we wrap the collar around it, instead of the collar being tight, the collar can actually come down a bit, you know? So maybe her collar is like this. So we see sort of the neck, you know? So that's kind of like the idea I think I'm going for. So we sort of see, you know, the neck there. So when this pops out, it's going to pop out this skin as well and goes in there like that. That's kind of the idea I'm thinking of the collar. I think it's better to kind of have it at the side like that. So it's kind of a little bit more fun, I guess you can say. So that's kind of how that's shaping up, right? All right. So we might as well just keep going with this. So the arms are going to have the the cuff here. So we're going to have a cuff here like this. Right? We have a cuff there. And of course, we're going to have the cuff here as well. Like that, All right? So then we have those cuffs, you can sort of, it's almost shaping up, kind of like a rough sketch. Of course it's sagging, this is it a problem with Silly Putty. But it started giving me the idea of where we're at. And then uh, this stuff, you know, we're going to have a lot of wrinkles underneath here, we'll have a lot of wrinkles there, we'll have the bigger chest and everything. So you can sort of like what I'm going for. That's kind of like my whole idea. So we got a lot, a lot of ways to go, but... So I think what I'm going to do first is, before we even attempt the skirt, we're going to work on this piece up here. Because I think if I don't work out this collar piece up here uh, the way I want it to, what's going to happen is if I do the skirt, I'll probably snap and break something and stuff up there. So I think we really have to work out this collar first. Uh, so I think that's my first plan of attack on this part. So we're going to definitely work out this collar, but you can see that's kind of what I'm going for. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is roll out uh, A's wrap it around, give it some uh, like lines. I'm gonna have the lines on the collar and the, uh, the cuffs and also the bottom of the sweater as well. But the main sweater is just gonna be like uh, bunchy. So I want these to have stripes on it like I did with the socks, but the main shirt is gonna be just kind of like bunched up and stuff like that. Uh, so we'll get this done first and then we'll go on to the skirt. And I think it should uh, look pretty cool once done. So I went in the garage and I pretty much chopped out this part of the neck. So it's, you know, it's a little bit tricky now. Uh, you can't just throw A's on there and then hope that you pop this off. It's going to work. It's really not. So there's a few ways of doing it. One, you could throw a bunch of A's here, but you could put baby powder down first and then go that route. Or you can use saran wrap. So we're going to try this saran wrap first, see how it works. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um... But this is going to get hidden mostly anyway, so I'm not really super worried about if it's like perfect right away because we're going to have to probably do this a few times uh, to get a really nice uh, look. So basically what I would do is I would just put this down like so. You know, if you really want, you can even have the saran wrap sort of popped in here to lock it in place like this. And then what you can do is take the eaves and sort of shove it in here like so. Now the problem is, is you remove this and you pull the saran wrap around, it's going to pull it up. So you wanna to try to take off as much saran wrap as you possibly can. And basically, we're going to just sh shove this in here to create this first part. Now, if you really want to, you can go in here and sort of start building out where the neck is supposed to be. Um, it's, like I said, it's all going to get chopped up. It's going to get refit anyway. Um, I'm probably going to have to 
use uh, baby powder. So let's just kind of try to take it down somewhat. Now, just to be on the safe side, kind of pop it out just to make sure nothing's clicking or holding. You know, there's still a gap underneath here. We're going to fix all that up as well. But this is kind of just the start of getting this, you know. Once we pretty much got a nice flush piece here, we can actually go in and start sanding and chopping and really kind of get it there. So we're just going to kind of leave this like this for the day. Come back another day and sort of clean it up a little bit more. So actually I'm not even going to worry about the details of the neck because it's just going to get chopped up anyway. So just to be on the safe side, you know, just to make sure we're going in the right direction, pop it out. And you kind of see we're kind of creating that little key. You can see all the little flat part around there is what's going to get chopped up. That's fine. Maybe put this back on there and go like this. So, we're just going to leave her like that. And like I said, tomorrow, another day, come back. Now, the saran wrap might get stuck underneath. It is possible that if you kind of clinch the uh, saran wrap between some aves and you pull out, it'll get there. But that can all get cleaned up later. So, like I said, it looks a little weird now, but it's just uh, the way we're going to work it out. All right, so it's the next day, and that pops off really well. But you can see how this sort of gets caked up a bit and it kind of you see all these little wrinkles back there it's not the end of the world uh, so at least this goes on there pretty well now and we got at least a start so I got to put some more A's around the back of the neck here and kind of clean this up uh, get that nice and flat and then what's going to happen is I'm going to try to go in the garage I'm going to kind of start shaping this down to create the you know neck muscles and uh, all this stuff sand this down and we'll try to get this as flush as possible so it'll take a couple tries but once I get it in, it should work out pretty well. So I think what I might do, though, is uh, do a little bit of sanding now just to kind of get this cleaned up and then go back in and flush this up and just keep going until we get a nice, good area where this pops in and out and it works. So i got to be careful, though, that none of this kind of breaks off because it's kind of thin, but you can kind of see where we're going to go with it. So it's going to be a little tricky. It takes a little time, uh, but we'll get it. All right, so after I sanded it down, I took some of the A's and I pushed it into this area. So now I put baby powder all over it. So what we do is we kind of push this on. Hopefully we don't, we kind of see if there's any mess ups or causing any issue. So we are definitely causing a little bit of an issue. So what we do is we go back in here, squeeze some of this out. Want to make sure the magnet is definitely touching the uh, piece of metal. Try it one more time. We gotta put a little bit more A's back here on this part of the neck. And gotta start being careful though. The more and more you push this on with the uh, even though there is baby powder. What will happen is it will start to get a little bit more tacky and it will start causing a little bit of an issue of it sticking. Now, the reason why I put a bunch of the A's back here around this piece is I wanted to thicken it up a little bit just to make sure because there is a very, very thin layer missing because of the uh, saran wrap. So that's something you have to take into account. And we don't want that stuff to snap off. Now I don't mind if it's thicker on the outside because that'll all get sanded down again. Not a big deal. Make sure you wet up your A's. Make sure it gets tacky again. Uh, you don't want to put uh, A's on A's that has uh, baby powder because it won't stick. 
just kind of pulling all this stuff to the side because it's going to get sanded down. Alright, go hit it more with so so I'm gonna keep doing this back and forth, back and forth till I get it to where I need it. Now you may be asking why are you doing that if the collar is gonna kinda of cover it and the hair is gonna cover it? The reason too is because if I have any gaps in there and then like say you do the collar and I push the head down and I pop it out, it might cause issues. So I'd rather have something flush and perfect to make my life a little bit easier when I start working on other parts. But pushing this down to make sure we go down and we're looking pretty good. So as you can kind of see, what happens is maybe it's starting to get a little bit tacky here, you know, and you just got to keep uh, hitting it with some uh, baby powder and making sure it's going. Also, just go around the item two that you're putting this on. Make sure there's no A's or anything getting caked up there. So what I'll probably do now is I'm going to go back in the garage, add some more baby powder here and here, and keep going. And then when we come back, it should be all done, sanded up and everything in a day or two. And we can start working on the skirt. I pretty much got the collar on where I want it. I kind of like the way it's kind of like, you know, a little bit of wrinkles. Uh, it kind of goes around and the head comes out no problem. So I'll be able to paint that and it goes in there and it works. Now, what I want to do is I want to create lines on here and I want to create lines on the cuffs, but not the main outfit. Um, you know, if I was able to do this from like a sculpting from scratch where this stuff doesn't cure up and then you bake it or you do a 3D sculpt, Adding all those lines would work, but with the uh, A's and stuff, it would take forever and probably wouldn't line them up correctly. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to let this kind of cure up for a bit. Uh, kind of like maybe go do some other stuff, uh, whatever, and uh, let this sit a bit. And then what I'm going to do is once it gets a little bit tougher, uh, I'm probably going to need to give it like an hour or so. I'm going to use my dentist tool here. And what I'll do is I'll kind of show you on the back. What I want to do is I want to start creating a line. So we'll kind of start one right here. And just kind of create a line going down, you know, like so. And then we go back in there with the tool. Well, not the tool, the, uh, the uh, towel. And we sort of kind of create a little bit of a line back there. So I think I'm going to kind of do a little bit around here because I'm actually pushing it against here. But when I start to come up around here, it might be a little difficult. So I'm going to try to create some line stuff because the problem is, is if this hard enough to the point where I can score in the line and it doesn't do anything, but then trying to do this on there and create that texture again won't work. So it's a little bit tricky. Uh, worst case scenario too, you can always do primer and then you can hit this with like primer and you can create a texture that way too. So all I'll do is I'll do a couple more lines here and there. Uh, I'm going to try to create the lines fairly separate. I don't want to go too close to them, but I don't want to go too far. So I'm going to try to create at least a little bit of a line work, see how it works out. All right, so uh, I think we got the neck where I wanted it to be. Um, it's got a really nice, good, uh, heavy collar on her. Uh, we can see the neck. And it doesn't come up too high. I didn't want it to come up way too high up here. I like being able to see the neck because it's sort of stretched out. So it does come back there on her neck and over there. So this way when I do the hair, I could do a little bit of a flow. 
Um, I can have some fun with it blowing a little bit so this way I have more room. If it's too close to the collar, then it get a little bit tricky and I would have to probably attach the head, which I didn't really want to do with this one. But I think we are looking pretty good. So all I really need to do is sort of some touch-ups here and there. Sort of just kind of clean up the underneath of it to make it look like it's uh, not completely just, com you know, kind of rounded around the bottom. So I'll be tweaking it a little bit as I go. Uh, I had to do this a lot off camera because what happens is I try to get in closer and if I'm not seeing what I'm doing, uh, it just comes out very messy. Uh, so I have enough aves now where I could do these two uh, wristbands too. So I'm going to do the same thing here with the uh, cuffs on her wrists uh, and make sure the hands go in nice and even and stuff. And then after that, we could let that cure up. And if this looks good and I'm happy with where it's at and I get it all cleaned up, we can start working on the skirt. So it's starting to take shape. I really like the way it's coming out right now. I think once we add the bushiness of the sweater though, like the bushy curl, uh, you know, uh, stuff that's being pushed up over here, a lot of wrinkles and stuff and make itself, it'll like come together. Uh, so uh, what I did though is I went in the garage with some baby powder and I made sure that, uh, you know, what happens is if you put, you know, A's around here and you push the arm in, well, sometimes what'll happen is, you know, this is the arm and this is the hand that you're connecting and when you put it together you might get like Abe stuck in between it so you might get Abe stuck between it and then what happens is it's not actually letting metal touch the magnet and the other problem too is if you put baby powder in there what happens is it'll get packed in that little hole on the magnet and then what happens is you're not getting a connection of the magnet touching the metal so if you put too much baby powder in there and you kind of hit it with, you know, just kind of blow on it, you're really not getting it out. So I have a lot of these can airs I pick up once in a while for my computers. So what I do is I put that in there and I hit it and I make sure I get all that baby powder out of there. So we have a nice uh, connection. So you can see what happens is if you're not careful, what all, all this like ease sort of kind of gets in between here. So you want to make sure that you're not getting any ease uh, from your original connection. So just to be on the safe side, be careful with stuff like that. And even when you go to push this in there, if you kind of hit it, and then you get A's onto this piece, that's another problem. So you just gotta be wary of what you're doing and make sure you line everything up. And it goes in, no problem. Same thing with this one. Double check, you know, like you can see some of this red residue. That's why I used the uh, red A's. Kind of put your finger around there, make sure we get any of that off. And then we put this back on, and we're good to go. And I got to do this. I did the same thing with the head. You got to get, make sure you know there's nothing getting stuck up around here, around here, and stuff, just to be on the safe side. So always double check. Doesn't hurt. And we are looking pretty good. So you can see how she's looking. I like that collar. Uh, I think the cuff looks really well the cuffs on her as well over here. Now there's a little spot over there that I don't like. So what we're gonna do is sort of just kinda push this back up around there. Just to make sure I wasn't hitting that key area. So that looks good. Yeah, so I think that that's working pretty good. Now, you know, this all looks weird. You know, this looks weird here too, but once you get that cuff on there and you get those bushy, uh, you know, like when your sleeves get pulled back, you know, and you start to grab all this, you know, curly stuff and cuffs, that'll come together and everything. So we'll let this sit aside and then uh, hopefully the next step, uh, we'll work on the skirt. And once the skirt's done, what we did here with these cuffs, we're going to have to do for the bottom of the sweater as well down here. So once we get the skirt on, we wrap another thing aves around there. We create those lines, we get the texture, and then we got to really focus on the sweater. Okay, so it's time to work on the skirt. Uh, I got the legs all buffed up as nice as possible. I did some wet sanding on it, and I like where, where they're at. 
uh, and right now the collar and uh, the cuffs are looking pretty good. Normally, I would have to like prime this up and sand this down, but since we're going to be putting a you know a heavy sweater on top of all of this, it doesn't really matter, uh, and I pretty much at a good spot. So for the skirt, we need to kind of create the shape first, and then we can start detailing it. Now, skirts are a little tricky. Uh, if it's a tight skirt, it's a little bit easier, but like a skirt that's flowing is a little bit trickier. Uh, I need to kind of make it a little bit thicker than normal because it could snap and break. Um, thin Aves is okay, Thin Magic Sculpt is okay, but, you know, if you're handling the item and, you know, we're not making this piece in, like, different pieces and then glue it together at the end of the project, you gotta be very careful. So, this is Magic Sculpt. I just went and rolled this out. Uh, it's fairly thick, which is fine. I'm going to let this cure up for a bit. I'm going to give this about an hour before I really start messing with it um, because right now it's a little bit floppy, as you can kind of see. I want it to be a little bit tougher. So Magiscope is the same thing as Aves. Uh, I use it on a lot of my projects, but I find that it's very hard to sculpt with this stuff. It's not, you know, like Aves where you could kind of go in there and mush it around and use safety solvent. This stuff sort of kind of starts curing up on you right away. It's very dry, uh, so it's not really... Um, sculptor friendly for what I do. Now you can uh, use this for certain things like this. We're going to build up the skirt and then we use Aves on top of it when it cures. Uh, when stuff breaks, like say this leg breaks and I need to repair it, what I usually do is I drum a big hole in there, I put a metal rod in, and I use Magisculpt in there and then I use Aves on the outside to seam everything up because I find that Magisculpt is a little bit more durable. Now I roll this out and I really don't want to mess this around too much, but this, I use baby powder. You use a, a sheet of uh, wax paper, you put baby powder on there, and you roll out like you're baking a pie. Now there's two little air bubbles over here, not the end of the world. Kind of squeeze those out. Uh, so what I did is I made sure, I made up enough, and I made sure it'll go around it. So what we'll do is I'll put the camera down and give you guys an idea of what it's going to look like. But you can see it's still fairly flap you know like flops and it's too soft. All right, so we don't have the best camera angle but you can see if we put this around her now it's good but the problem is is it doesn't really go so we want this to be sort of uh, we want this to kind of go around this way like so and we want to kind of you know give it like a like something like that you know we're gonna do something like that so I have to sort of kind of bend this as like kind of like get this kind of bent around like it's kind of like a circle so what I have to do is sort of kind of go like this so it kind of goes around and we're gonna kind of cut this end off cut now you gotta make sure you don't cut too much off because when you put it around it won't work so I'm just kind of doing stuff like that and then what we'll do is with this around one more time, make sure we're kind of getting where we want it to be. Now, what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to try to get the seam over here. Because if the seam is kind of, like, if that's kind of touching her leg, I can just use Aves and sort of clean it up. And then what we'll do is we'll kind of stretch it as we go. So like I said, I'm going to sort of go something like that route, you know. It'll get cut. It'll be chopped up. But I'm going to let this, like I said, I'm going to let this cure up a little harder. Give it about maybe a half hour. And then we go on. Now the only problem with uh, the Magisculpt is once it starts to harden up, it starts to lose its tackiness even if you use water. So what I might have to do is put a couple drops of glue around the area to kind of like glue it on and let it hold and then go from there. But we'll get to that in a little bit.
All right, so as you see, what I'm doing is I'm trying to create like a flow on here. Um, what I'm trying to do is use tape to kind of hold this up. Because uh, what it is, it's really tough now, but it's still fairly, there's so much weight here, it's still pulling it down. So what I'm doing is just trying to get some tape and hold these pieces up as best as I can for a little while. Uh, while I'm trying to kind of create these wrinkles. It might get tweaked in a little bit here and there, but I really like the way this is flowing right now. Uh, we got to at least see the booty in this direction, you know, so if you have her, uh, you know, there, you can kind of see it. So this is going to get tweaked up a little bit more, but the problem is, is there's a little bit of water under there and the tape and I got to just keep playing with it. So I'm just pretty much like, you know, watching some YouTube stuff now and I'm just kind of, you know, just tweaking this as I go. So hopefully by the time we come back, this should be kind of cured up to where I want it. Now one of the things you got to be very careful is you got to make sure you're able to get in there with a paintbrush too. So you can't just do this and be like, oh, it's perfect. So while I was working on it, I was putting it upside down to make sure I could get in there with a the paintbrush. Uh, so I'm just kind of making sure that the hand here wasn't hitting anything. Uh, you know, these wrinkles will probably be tweaked a little bit down the line. As long as the main outside is kind of where I want it, this stuff over in here can get tweaked and chopped up. Uh, you can kind of see what's happening here. This is kind of like getting pulled down. Uh, there was some baby powder and stuff like that, so it's not really holding too well. Uh, but I definitely want to make sure we can see back in there like so, like that. I definitely want to make sure we see that booty. So I'm probably going to maybe use some stronger tape or something and kind of work with it. So when we come back, hopefully it'll be cured up a lot more. I'm probably, probably got like another hour to go uh, where it's going to be really durable. And then uh, from there, we could come back another day and start uh, tweaking it out. All right, it's been about like two days or three days or so. I completely uh, lost track of time. So today I was actually in the garage working on stuff. So I brought her in as well and I sort of chopped up some of these areas because this stuff was too gunked up and I needed to clean it a little bit more. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find out how far this uh, sweater is going to come down and that'll help me give me an idea of where I'm going to start building up the skirt. Now, I thought about doing the pleated skirt thing, but it's just not going to work. Um, that uh, that's going to take a that would take a lot more like planning and detailing and stuff, and I just wouldn't be able to do it with the eaves. Uh, so I think we're going to keep it this way, and I think we're going to just uh, sort of you know build on to this a little bit more. So I like the idea that it's a shorter skirt. We got a nice booty shot, and we'll just add more wrinkles to it. So this way, uh, it'll make it look a little bit more flowing and fluid and loose and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm going to grab some uh, Silly Putty, I'm going to wrap it around here to give me an idea where I'm going to have that uh, same cuffs around here at the bottom of the sweater. So that will give me an idea of how much I need to build up and where it will go. Alright, so I got some Silly Putty and I think the idea is the bottom of the sweater is going to go like right about there. I think that uh, that's a good spot for it. So we got to find the bottom of the waist. And so... This is giving me a guide, a little bit of a visual, you know. Um, so this skirt over here looks a little bit longer than what's over here, which is fine. I'm going to kind of build up some of this down here a little bit more with some wrinkles. So I'm not really worried about this part too much. But we st definitely still need to get an idea of where this piece is going to go. So as you can see, this is that long, and then... It's sort of almost there, so we're just missing some little bit of wrinklage around here. And I'm going to give it like a little bit of a flat. Uh, what I might do is sort of dremel out this piece a little bit more to kind of come up around here a little bit more. And then over here, uh, it's got to be just kind of, just got to kind of play with it. But I think that'll be good for where the skirt's going. So, this, so if the belly button's like right about there. Alright. So I got an idea where it's going to go. So it's going to go pretty much right where it's at so if we grab our marker now the only problem with um, Sharpie is if you do use Sharpie on uh, primer what happens is when you hit primer over it the Sharpie still kind of comes through uh, so it's not the end of the world just gotta be careful if you're at the final stages with a Sharpie and you're ready to throw some uh, paint down over it, it might come through. So you figure, like, the belly button would probably be right about there. That's about the area. So yeah, so that that's a good spot for where that'll end up.
I would throw the blue pencil, but I probably would just keep breaking it with all the roughness. All right, so that's kind of that's kind of where we're at. Yeah, so I was kind of it's kind of close to where I was hoping the skirt would be, because uh, you figure that little thick piece right there for the bottom of the sweater, and then bunching it up would work out pretty well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in the garage, I'm going to ch chisel out this a little bit because I just want to have this curve up more to like where this little point is. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll start grabbing some A's, I'll do a little bit tonight, uh, just kind of work out some wrinkles in the front, maybe lock in some of this over in here or so, and go from there. Now once I sort of get this skirt sort of built up where I'm happy with where it's at, uh, what's going to happen is I'm going to go underneath it here and I'm going to put Aves underneath in certain areas and sort of fill in here only because uh, I probably will never get the paintbrush in some of these areas and I want to make sure this stuff is a little bit thicker underneath as well so I might kind of thicken up some of these little wrinkles and stuff and then I might actually sand down some of these wrinkles so if I feel that this piece over here needs to be a little bit dipped more what I could do is I could fill this in with some Aves and then I can sand this down and I could create a more of a dip. So this is kind of like the armature, and then I'll just keep building and building to where I want it. So it's not going to happen in one shot, um, but at least it's kind of like I'm happy with where we're at. I think this 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 is the part that's only bothering me. Is it just got to lengthen up some stuff around here? So let me go chop that up. I'm gonna mix up some eaves, and I'll just start working. You know, maybe I'll start working a little bit here for tonight, and then I can keep working as I go.
would be a good chance to close out this video. I'm really happy with where we're at. You can see how she's evolving. You know, this is what we started with, and this is where she's at at this stage of the game. So I'm really happy with the skirt. I'm happy with the thicker legs and the socks and shoes. So definitely we're getting the whole Velma vibe down here. Uh, up here, we still got a lot more to go with the sweater and then the hair. So, like, once we get the sweater on her, it's going to look like Velma. But I think once we finish up that hair, that's what's really going to set her apart. So, the hair is definitely the last stage of the game before we start any paint work. Uh, plus, I have to also kind of, you know, think about the whole uh, setup with the base. Uh, but I'll get that to that in a second. We'll pop out uh, Daphne and we'll put it side by side and we'll kind of talk about that. But, for right now... Uh, what I need to do is I got to do a lot of prep work on her. I got to do a lot of priming and sanding. I did a lot of sanding on the skirt already. I did like three sessions of sanding on there. But what I have to do is I have to get underneath this skirt. That's the next. And I want to make sure I don't snap any of that. So that's a little bit tricky, uh, but I'll get there. So what I'm going to do is anytime I'm out in the garage and I'm working on commissions and stuff and I get a chance, I can actually put this in the rotation, do some priming and sanding, uh, especially on some of these nice hotter days that we're getting now. So I should be able to get this all really cleaned up. I was a little bit concerned in the beginning about where this skirt would go with this arm, but after I did all my sculpting and everything, it works out great where this is removable and doesn't hit anything. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, so other than that, um, next video, like I said, what we'll do is we're going to come back. Uh, we're going to focus on the sweater. I think it will be a fairly short video. Uh, it's going to be a lot of like just uh, speeding up because uh, I'll explain what I'm doing. And then i got to roll out the A's and put the A's on top of the item and really start sculpting. I can't really sit there and mess with it because I'm going to have like a three-hour window. And I really just got to get in there and focus it. And I just got to really, uh, you know... Just get in the zone on that because I can't really sit there and do it in sections because I don't think it'll work out too well. What I think I can do though is I think I could do the main part first and then some of the arms. And then after that I could do the bunchiness on there. But we'll explain that in the next video. But I'm pretty happy with where she's at. Let's get a little bit closer. Uh, we'll show you a little bit more detail. So you can kind of see, you know, the glasses are really setting her apart. You know, we got the collar going. Uh, like I said, you know, it's kind of like that collar that uh, Lana has from Archer. So you can kind of see how it kind of comes over the edge a little bit like that. Uh, definitely uh, shaping up pretty well. I really like the skirt flow. I had a lot of fun with the skirt. Um, it, at first, I was a little bit hesitant on how it was going to work. And I know, you know, a lot of like uh, uh, Velma skirts are kind of like uh, pleated. But I kind of like this one a little bit better. It's a little bit easier. And I think it brings a lot more life to it. So we got a nice little booty shot for you guys as well. So you can kind of see how that's going. So yeah, just the upper body is looking a little bit weird. But I think with the socks and shoes, everything's coming together pretty well. So that's where we're at with that. So you know what we'll do? We're going to stop the camera. I'm going to pop out Daphne where she's kind of at. We'll have Daphne and her side by side in this video. If you're watching my live streams, you can see how Daphne is uh, evolving each Friday. On, uh, so you can, we'll see how she's looked. And I'm going to explain the idea of what's going to happen with these two with Daphne. All right, so here is Daphne and Velma side by side. So you can see if you are you know, come to my live streams on Fridays, you can see where Daphne is compared to where Velma is at this point. Uh, so we just have a lot of the sweater work and the hair, and she's pretty much ready to go. As far as Daphne, I got to still finish up the outfit. I got to get the hands situated. I got to work out the collar, the hair. So things are going to evolve at the same time. But we got, I'm, I'm, I'm moving along pretty well on these. I'm pretty happy with where they're going. Um, even as for side projects, they're moving along pretty well while I'm still doing commissions. But that's where we're at. Now, uh, one of the things that I wanted to explain in this video, uh, a lot of people were giving me feedback while working on Daphne, is that uh, I should put them together on one single base in like a graveyard scene. And I think that's a great idea because my idea was I was going to put them in like a haunted house, maybe like a wooden floor type thing. But I kind of like the graveyard scene a little bit better so I can make it look like a little bit of grass is growing, a lot of dirt and a tombstone. And on the tombstone, maybe... Uh, you know, the names of the creators and artists of the characters, stuff like that. And then maybe a hand coming out of the uh, tombstone grave type thing. So that's kind of where I'm at with that point. Um, the only issue is, is, like I said, I don't plan to keep these. These are just stuff that I like to do and then uh, sell off at the end. Uh, and, you know, just as uh, side projects. Uh, so it would be kind of difficult to maybe do one single base and then these two characters on that base. 
and I would have to design it where they're on the base and they would fit in the best of shelf. Um, because I think a lot of people have best of cases. Uh, definitely wouldn't fit in any uh, DTOFs. I know a lot of people are getting Maju cases now and stuff like that. So I'm thinking maybe we'll take it a little bit step further and create a base that sort of connects both characters, but you can still separate them and they can actually be displayed single. So, you know, if say if somebody's like, oh, I only wanted that character and somebody only wanted this character, I can actually split them apart. But if somebody was interested in both of them, then you can connect the bases together and it works, or you can still split them apart on your collection. So I think that's the best option because putting it together on one single base and the way you position them, if you want to look at a character a certain way, it might be hard. Because this is how I think the characters would be set up on the base. You know, uh, maybe uh, Velma will be kind of like a little bit like here, and Daphne maybe turned a little bit this way like thing because she's kind of looking in this direction you know and then if you were to turn them you can still get the booty shots uh so it's something i have to play with i can't really do it right now with these uh bases here i have to sort of make a you know make a generic uh flat uh resin thing and then kind of start chopping and going from there so the way it's going to work is i think once these two characters are finished up and they're ready to go to almost be painted that's when I'm going to start focusing on the base. What we'll do is we'll do it in a live stream. One day I'll, I'll announce on the live stream that we're going to focus on the base, try to get some feedback, see about positioning, and then from there maybe one base I'm working on the live stream and the other base that's connecting I work on the video together and go from there. So i got to figure out how I'm going to evolve it, but one way or the other we'll work it out and then we're definitely going to focus on Velma's uh, paint app on the videos and Daphne will be on the live stream. So thanks for watching guys. Be sure to hit some comments. Give me some feedback on this, what you're thinking. Uh, and then hop in my live streams and give me some feedback there. And we'll see how this uh, you know, little setup works out. So thanks for watching and we'll be back with some more videos.